Pyrezio Little Fire Flower. Well, welcome to my video. Um, th this is a special video that has nothing to do with stream at all. This is made specially for the YouTubes. Um, now, we just celebrated my mum's birthday. And so in order to prepare for it and all of that, I decided to make her a, a pavlova and, and put chocolate butterflies on top of it. Um, so I thought, you know what? I've not seen people do these. So, especially not the way I do them. So I figured, why not share it with you guys so you guys can make them too? I mean, doesn't that just sound great? I mean, we can have chocolate butterflies together. A and you can feel free to send pictures of yours if you give them a go in the credits down below. Comments down below. And I would love to see your chocolate butterflies. I really, really would. Um, so yeah. Uh, this video here is of me making the butterflies. Now, I will warn you now that you might burn yourself if you're not careful with the hot chocolate. I mean, when you melt chocolate, um, it is very easy to accidentally burn yourself if you've overheated the chocolate. You don't want to do that. That's bad. And it's much less enjoyable if the if the butterflies cause pain to make, then they're not worth it. So, as long as you are careful with the hot surfaces, or oh, hot solutions, really, and... and, and um, you have fun, and you like what you do, then it's all good. And we can have fun and eat chocolate butterflies together. Yeah. Um, but I do have a little warning to do, tell you about chocolate. Um, because there are two types of chocolate. There's uh, melting chocolate, and then there's confectionery chocolate. Um, confectionery chocolate uh, uses cacao um, butter in it. Uh, that way, which makes it chocolate chocolate um, which is good for baking and stuff like that but when it comes to melting chocolate and then making stuff with the chocolate you're better off going for one that um, going for a compound chocolate which has vegetable oil in it instead because then it will be glossier and it will have a higher melting point so it will actually hold the shape a lot better than if you use the one with the cocoa oil or butter or whatever it's called um so now that i've got that covered uh let's get into it shall we yeah i think we shall um <laughs> let, let's get going with the bubble bows and, and the butterflies and um yeah i i hope you guys enjoy this different kind of video and uh if you want me to do more stuff like this, please comment and like the video. Maybe draw me a subby wubby and we'll see how we go. Okay? Okay. Now. Here we go. I'm not used to really showing my hands. Uh, this is my second time. What I've got here is a basic uh, little template on different butterfly wings so that I can use them for a bit of inspiration. We're using baking paper for this, which is a wax paper that you use in the oven for baking things. Make sure you do it with the shiny side up. And um, see, I'm lining it over the other one so that I can keep track of the sides. I fold it in half so that I've got a center line. And then I grab the chocolate. Right here, I am using white compound chocolate with purple food coloring in it because my mum's favorite color is purple um, to make up the wing. As you can see, I'm just roughly smearing it on there, onto the paper, uh, so that it can actually, you know, um, so that it can actually make the, the butterfly shape, as well as, uh, yeah, make it, making the, it work. <laughs> Giving them a bit of a unique pattern, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, um, as you can see, I'm tapping it out, smearing it out, but I'm only doing one wing, and there is a big, big reason for that. And the reason is we're going to fold it along the center line like this, and um, tap it out and rub it out so that the butterfly wings 
can be shaped and also so that we can get kind of a cool raw shack pattern going with them. That way they're nice and organic and kind of cool and fun to use. Um, here I'm using um, a cake modeling tool to just carefully um, spread out the chocolate so that it actually uh, creates the desired shape for the wing. Um, and, and I'm moving it around and adjusting it and everything so that hopefully it all works out. Um, and I'm also trying to spread out the purple amongst the dark chocolate. It has indeed been a while since I um, actually done any uh, chocolate butterflies so I was still kind of getting the hang of it again because you need a, a little bit of adjustment time to readjust to it. Then once it's spread out, open it up and you got yourself a butterfly. Kind of like when you were in uh, kindergarten or something and, and you were doing finger painting and you folded it over to make a butterfly or a bug. Although here I'm now using um, the kind of silicon spheres uh, that are used to make uh, spherical ice cubes to get the shape of the wings so that they are in fact three dimensional. Which is kind of what I'm going for with these. Um, and here I am adjusting the chocolate just a little bit to define the anatomy of the butterfly by, um, yeah, making sure it's got the bug part, not just the wings. Um, me being me and probably classified as gross, uh, you don't do this if you're doing this for butter butterflies with anyone other than a family member because I'm cleaning the tools in between in my mouth. I know it's not exactly hygienic, but it is a lot more tasty and a lot less wasteful. <laughs> so if you're making them for others, you might want to use some paper towel and some warm water. And make sure that it's completely dry before you touch the chocolate again, otherwise you'll make it go lumpy. See look, here I am, I've got the folded paper and I'm just smearing it out onto the paper as we do the second one. I'm not adhering as much to the shape of a butterfly with this one because I realized, oh yeah, you know what, I can just, you know, <gasps> create the shape when I smoosh it out. So that is what I'm doing. Um, I'm also attempting to use the purple, white chocolate and the dark chocolate together to create a bit of a more purple dominated one that didn't exactly work out but as you can see I'm rubbing them flat now that it's closed over and getting a unique winged shape um, just tapping it out leading it out spreading it out um, yeah and then slowly oh isn't that satisfying with a little bit of a peel as you can see here the purple chocolate is solidifying a bit um, because white chocolate does melt faster than dark chocolate, but, um, I think I'll work a way around it. So here I am just arranging it so that it too is three-dimensional. Uh, I kind of do that with all of my butterflies because I like them 3D personally. Um, but yeah, yeah. Gotta quickly use up the white chocolate, purple white chocolate before, uh, it becomes too solid. So quick smish it down and then a squish, squish, squish and a spread, spread, spread. Here I'm actually attempting to do purple surrounded by um, dark chocolate and I thought maybe if I smeared it down first and then did it that it might um, work better. I don't quite recall if that ended up working but um, good try! Uh, Pyro from the past. Um, it has been about a month since I actually filmed this footage because when I pre-recorded, when I uh, recorded this last time, it didn't record. So I had to do it again. Yeah. So um, being a little sour, I did wait a little while longer before I uh recorded it again because. I hate repeating myself, I really do. Um, but here I am attempting to tap it out again. Just tap, 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 tap it 
that again. Uh, to make the butterfly. Oh, this one's got quite the train up with the thing. Oh, because it's got a little knobby bit on the end now. But that's okay. I'm sure it'll end up cute. I don't actually remember which butterflies what at this stage. Um, but in case you're wondering, I did draw those. See, it didn't quite work so well as much as I hoped, but I gotta keep on trying. Those um butterflies in the background there, uh, I did in fact draw. Um, as you can see, they're dry and three dimensional, which is what we want. Um, yeah. And then I've gone back, melted some more chocolate, and then I do the smear smear again. Wow, that's a messy one, but this is just gonna be a little butterfly. It's just gonna be a little guy. Um, don't actually remember any plain purple ones getting done though. Hmm. But, as you can see, I'm creating the shape just with my fingernails on the back of the parchment paper or the baking paper. Spread it out. Ah, we got a cute little butterfly right there. Mm-hmm. And on the paper, I have written the words keep it simple because I am really, really prone to um, getting overcomplicated. Don't tend to do things the normal way, but I do tend to make things overcomplicated. I like to think that this is rather simple chocolate craft to do. Um, especially once you get the hang of it and you get the full on Rorschach thing going. Which I think is quite cool, but uh, yeah. Uh, we'll have to see and try and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Um, but I am working fast because we're running out of time with this melted chocolate because it wants to become solid chocolate again. Um, yeah. I made the white chocolate purple because it truly is my mum's favourite colour and as this was decoration for her birthday pavlova, which was her special birthday cake because it's her favourite dessert. Um, see look! It, it got too solidified, it didn't work. So I'm trying to save this one by tapping out some uh, melted dark chocolate on there too to see if maybe this butterfly can be salvaged. And we try, and we try, and we failed! Oh, you can't win them all. I guess that butterfly has got to go in the pan. But hey, if we move quick enough, we may get more butterflies before we got to melt more chocolate. So here I'm tapping out just a dark chocolate one from the looks of it. Kind of looks like a boomerang, doesn't it? Now tap it out, tap it out. This footage is indeed sped up. Um... But uh, yeah, as you can see, just by scratching it out, we do get quite a good little butterfly shape. And by propping it up so that the um, the corners come together with twi the curls of the paper, we do get ourselves cute little three-dimensional butterflies. But I didn't stop there. No. Oh, here I'm doing a little bit more of a detailed one. And I'm putting a controlled amount of chocolate on there with this um, muddling tool. And I smushed it on there and I squeeze, squeeze it out, have it out, rub it out, spread it out. And voila! A delicate little butterfly. The color of poop. But we don't have to worry about them just being the color of poop. I mean chocolate. Because... I have a tendency not to do things the most simplest of ways, so I took it a step further. But we'll see what that is in a little bit. <laughs> uh, you'll see what I'm, where I'm going with it. And it was truly different and, and kind of cool. They look cool. I like them. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tap it out and create the shape. Um, once again, this is using compound chocolate, which has vegetable oil in it instead of cocoa butter. 
Um, ooh, that one created a nice shape in it. Ooh, that's gonna be a nice one. Um, but yeah, that way it will hold its shape. It won't wilt as much in um, warmer weather or warmer rooms. And uh, it has also got a glossier finish. Which is kind of what you want when you're making chocolate butterflies, you know? Um, yeah. Tap it out, tap, 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 tap it out. And spread it out. And then... Oh, yeah. The satisfaction of the perfect duplication like that is, is pretty good, really. It, it really is pretty good. I won't lie. I, I do love it when it does that. So satisfying. Like when you unwrap a new uh, TV or monitor or book and then you pull back the film and it just creates that <laughs> sound. It, it's kind of like that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they just need some time to go in the fridge so that they can become nice and hard and won't mad on me when I handle them further. Yeah. A few moments later. So off they go to the thing. This one's been in the refrigerator, as you can see. It is a little less shiny, but I've got um, a Ziploc bag here filled with melted chocolate. Uh, the better quality bags do not melt on you when you heat them in the microwave so it does make it a bit more uh, user friendly if you use cheap ones you will get melted plastic in your chocolate it's pure and simple so be careful about that and sometimes you'll burn yourself but here I'm just quickly going through with the little piping bag adding some details like the butterfly anatomy I like the one part of the little caterpillar part of, of, of the um of the butterfly and the antenna because how else can the butterfly flitter around to do its thing see adding the antenna and and then we'll get a little bit of anatomy in the crease and i'm just gonna use the spears there to keep them propped up oh that was a nice clean peel you can tell from looking at it anatomy an antenna. This one, I'm doing a bit more than just anatomy and antenna. I'm also adjusting the colors a little bit using the piped melted chocolate to add detail to it. Um, this is not a necessary stage. I just felt that it was a good idea in the moment because I am no good at keeping it simple. Which I really do need to remember when I'm doing stuff. Um, yeah. It, it's one of my biggest flaws when baking and all of that is I can't just do it the easy way. I can't just keep it the simple way. No, I got to get carried away and make myself extra creative and extra frustrated and extra annoyed and a little triggered when it doesn't go quite the right way. I mean... <clears throat> I'm okay, nothing to worry about here, everything's all good. Uh, I, I'm just trying to keep it simple and not get too carried away. You know? Yeah, that's it, I swear. That, that, that's it, you don't, ha you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that at all. Here I'm adding antenna and, and a bit of anatomy to a purple butterfly. Just sadly, um... It, it's only in the corner of the screen as opposed to the full screen. Um, oh, and we need to top it up. And here we are adding more decoration to the butterfly. Now, this butterfly, because I've pipe, I'm piping on around the outside, is going to be a fair bit heavier than the other butterflies, so it will take a bit more um, chocolate to hold it in place in order to mount it so that it can really display that it's going to be three-dimensional um because it is got a whole lot of extra chocolate because it's not both it's not not just smeared chocolate on both sides it's smeared and each wing's outline um which is the equivalent of double the chocolate sometimes triple 
Uh, depending on how many details past pirate chooses to make as she refuses to keep it simple. <laughs> I mean, what? No, never mind. <laughs> uh, here's past pirate adding an outline to the plain purple uh, butterfly there. Even though the purple chocolate there is giving off a nice sheen she be covering it with details in dark chocolate which is cool it kind of creates a lacy um a, 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 a lacy kind of gothic butterfly effect um i believe in the um finished result but it looks a little haphazard until it gets there so be where be ready for that <laughs> Um, yeah. So we've got the thin purple bit, which is a perfect mirror to the other side. Followed by some um, outlines conforming to the shapes that were created in how the original purple butterfly was created. And oh my god, did you see that? The Ziploc bag exploded! It exploded everywhere! Did you see that? My hand was covered in chocolate! So I went and cleaned my hands, melted some more chocolate, and then picked up where I left off. But still, that was a big chocolatey mess! A humongous chocolatey mess! It was huge! But at least it doesn't look like someone pooped on my hands anymore. And here we are working on the other one that we added extra to. Um, just adding the detail and the scales of the butterfly wings. Because did you know butterfly wings have scales? They do actually. It's it's a true fact um, that I learned one time. They also drink blood, but that's unrelated. Did you know butterflies have a thing in common with vampires? When I was a kid, I didn't know. But I think it makes them cooler, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, see look, now it's looking all lacy and gothic-y. Isn't that cool? Um, but yeah, this is a nice little delicate one. And I am going in over the perfectly uh, smooshed and duplicated wing there. Um, adding more definition, which is going to show up very well a bit later when I get to the luster dusting. Um, more on that in a little bit. <laughs> Although, if you saw my uh, cookie, my birthday cookies, you'd understand what I meant by that. But uh, yeah, here I am, just adding little details to the butterfly to be create the texture so that we get even more unique stuff out of the chocolate for when we add the shimmer the shimmer dust also known as the luster dust oh hell i'll explain it now luster dust it's just like shimmer dust that you use for like makeup and stuff but it's made out of sugar so it's completely edible and it has a tendency to bring out all possible textures underneath it. So it really adds an organic sheen and shine to it, to whatever you, you're dusting it on. But if you take your luster dust, usually it's a white or um, a gold. I have a gold, a copper and a rouge color. Um, but if you mix it with transparent looking alcohol, you can actually create a, a solid metallic paint that the alcohol in it literally evaporates off of whatever you're painting with it so that it leaves a painted surface. So you can create some really bold metal looks with it. And I just think that's nifty. It's so nifty and pretty and sparkly and very easy to get up there now uh, but very eye-catching and stuff 
as you will see. Um, yeah. Oh no, there was a chocolate spillage in that butterfly. So I'm going in there with a stylus tool and trying to clear the choc the dark chocolate out of the holes in the purple chocolate. And then it's all going to go into the refrigerator. And we're going to start on the luster dusting. Um, but first step, we got to carefully peel back the baking paper. We got to peel it back. As you can see, I'm being very careful. This one's quite large. This butterfly is a large one. And I'm just carefully going to peel the baking paper away from the chocolate. This is why we painted the chocolate butterflies on the shiny side of the paper because it stays stuck if you use the, the wrong side. Don't ask me how I know, just trust me on that one. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, I have filled it free. Uh, and oh no, we lost an antenna. But look, we got a three-dimensional chocolate butterfly. Now, this is where you, if you wanted, you definitely could finish at that stage. And you've got very cool three-dimensional chocolate butterflies that taste great. They look great, all that. But I'm adding lots to dust because I don't do things the simple way. And we're starting off with the rose red from the looks of it. Which is kind of, yep, rose red. Uh, which is a ready colored, um, metallic red colored uh, dust. And as you can see, I can just lightly buff it onto the antenna there and we're getting a nice metallic finish. Kind of like that nail art stuff, except this stuff won't hurt you if you eat it. Actually, this stuff won't hurt you at all. It's completely edible. It's food safe. It's made of sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but this stuff is made to be eaten. The other stuff, not so much. And, um, this stuff doesn't really have a taste. To it really um but yeah here I'm just dusting it off in the lid and on the thing so that I don't have too much on the brush because at this current stage I only want a light dusting of the color to adhere to the chocolate and um I think he uses the oils of the chocolate or something on the surface to uh stick I don't know it doesn't come off of the chocolate very easily once it's on there uh, but yeah, as you can see, I'm dusting around the edges. I use the fanned out brush to try and dust away any excess. Um, didn't work very well, but hey. As you can see, I'm propping it up with the spears sections for the ice cubes. And we're just giving it a nice glittery edge. And I'm using that big wide brush to gently just get it out of the way. And just give it a metallic sheen. See what I mean? It's giving it a, a kind of metal, the chocolate kind of a metal sheen and a rosy color. And I, I, I just think that's really nifty. Once I learned that this stuff existed, I, I, I've been putting it on everything that is dessert based. Um, because it just... Honestly, the cat in me goes, Oh, shiny, pretty, shiny, pretty, shiny, pretty, shiny, pretty, shiny, pretty, what the shiny? Um, and, and then I come back down to earth and go, ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't um, try and record videos very often because my brain trains off in odd places. But then I figure, hang on a second. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I stream is so that like you guys can just get all of me. But uh, yeah, here I'm trying to dust on the scales. Uh, but it's not working so well because I don't have any alcohol mixed with it. So it's just giving a flat shimmer instead of the detail that I'm hoping for. But hopefully soon Past Pirate is going to remember, Oh yeah, I need alcohol to make that work. <laughs> but it really did give it a nice metallic sheen. And now we're flipping it on its side so that we can dust the underside of the chocolate because while it is three-dimensional we got to take care of more than just the top yeah we got to take care of more than just the top and here I'm realizing oh wait a second the peeling of the paper 
butter on the chocolate has given it kind of cool texture effect. We can't really see it in this shot, but uh, I really liked the organicness that came from the paper print as it was melted and smooshed and, and peeled. So honestly, I, I just ended up embracing that element on the back of all of them because I really, really did like the effect. Because even though you wouldn't expect that paper to have much of a texture, um, the chocolate tells me it does. <laughs> oh no, the other antenna! How's it gonna find the flowers? But oh well, as you can see, the um, butterfly is finished and I'm gonna go stick it in the fridge and get another one. That way it can um, do the stay solid thing until I'm ready to do stuff with it. So here's this one. This one didn't actually turn out too good, but I've still shaved it in that anyway. I'm gonna see what happens when, when I um, peel it off and then add the shimmer. And we go peely, 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 carefully peel it, carefully peel it. I fear if we peel it too fast and too rough, it will break the butterfly. So you gotta be very careful with that stage. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's a very thin patch of uh, chocolate right there. Um, and I'm propping it up on the spears. Sections. Oh, we're going with copper this time. Ooh. Okay, and now I'm gonna dust on some copper. Or at least I think I'm gonna dust on some copper. I'm using a finer brush, so I am attempting to uh, do the detail without the alcohol still. Um. The past Pyra hasn't remembered. <gasps> oh my god, I need alcohol to make it work. Oh no. <laughs> but here I am trying to carefully dot on a pattern. Until I give up on that and grab the alcohol. Hmm. Maybe you should pass. <sighs> yep, that's right, Pyra. A little friction goes a long way. Oh, wait a second. Here is where she remembered I need to get alcohol. And here I've got a little alcohol in a glass. Now, let's see how this works properly. A little bit of alcohol on the brush, a little bit of shimmer, <gasps> and then look, I get a perfect painted line for my scales. If only the camera would focus! Focus! Once I realize that I can get these scales working right, I, I do remember I did get a little sidetracked uh, doing the whole uh, scales thing. Um, but I was having fun and zoning out and doing the creative thing, which I like to do and it is how I do it and yeah. I very much enjoy doing that, but I think maybe we should uh, Speed it up a little bit. Although, wait, no, in this bit, I am attempting to add trees because I like trees and I figure a tree pattern would work quite well in the copper on the leaves. But then I abandon that completely and just go with the scales. Um. Oh, a little bit of shimmer for the edges there. Yep, yep, yep. Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Oh. Um, <laughs> and then back to the alcohol dip. To create more of the tree. 
uh, to make up the scale pattern, uh, which is truly striking once you get going on the dark chocolate. Because I mean, the darker the color base color is, the more the metallics kind of glimmer and gleam and shine and sheen. And oh, look at that! See what I mean? At this stage, uh, I realized I had a little too much alcohol on the brush and it kind of looked like it was a vein of copper glittering along the chocolate. And I just thought that was cool. And as you can see here, I am just literally going for the scale of the butterfly now instead of the tree look. See what I mean about how striking it is on the dark chocolate with the, sh the copper shimmer? How cool is that? To be something that's edible that can do that, I think is super nifty. I really do. Um, <laughs> can you believe that this is sped up when nah, it's just so I'm consuming with the way that I get distracted into it. Oh look, you can see it shimmering and glittering and gleaming. Now to switch to the other side. I mean, I really love how this stuff looks on the chocolate. Seriously, it's so cool. Um, <laughs> But let's speed it up again. Yeah. Oh, looks like we're done with the copper on that one. And it's off the, re the refrigerator with that one. So that it keeps it shape. And then we'll come back with another one. Ooh, this one's a bit more close than the other ones. But oh my god, is that a satisfying peel right there. Such a satisfying peel. But we've got to be very careful with this one because of how vertical it is. It's going to make doing the, the detail on the wings a little bit harder. And here we're adding the gold luster dust. Adding the gold. Now I'm using my fine brush. Oh wait, no. I'm using the fan brush so that I can just give it a light dust in first. Just a light dusty dust, a little dusty dust. Mm, see what I mean about how the metallic shimmers really do take off on a darker base? I mean, damn. That's so cool. And I'm dusting the outside, bringing out that natural paper texture. Oh, yeah. Which creates such a good pattern, if you ask me. I mean, I didn't expect it to be so cool, so fire, but just look at that. That's so freaking cool the way that turned out. And it being something so simple that does it. Oh, looks like we're keeping that one nice and simple. And going on to one of the heavier butterflies. This is the one that had the chocolate explosion. But look at that purple underbelly. Now we get the fan brush and we uh, give it a quick dust in to get the texture of the paper on there because it's so cool. Oh wow, you can really see the texture on this one, huh? That's nifty. And a little bit of a focus of the gold on the antenna there and the tips of the chocolate. Mm-hmm. This one actually went from being one of my least hated ones to one of my most liked ones, I think. Um, but as you can see, we've got that gothic laciness going there and I'm just going to carefully, targetedly uh, dust the luster dust all over the bits. Bringing out the texture from the rough... Oh, alcohol in there too. Um, bringing out the texture of the chocolate from the gloops and the sploops and the gloopy gloops and the gloopy gloopy sloops and the bubba bubba see 
on creating a little spoke dots to, you know, emphasize it in a very interesting way. Um, love how the lust of dust really does create an interesting effect with the texture of the chocolate gloops and stuff that make up the shapes. Because it really does make you focus on the bits that you least expected. I mean, I didn't expect to be focusing on polka dot thingy around here. It just, it's just what happened when I added the dust. I'm not propping this butterfly up with the spears because it, its wings are a lot stronger than the other ones because of all of the dark chocolate on top of the base butterfly. Um... But look at that, how the gold makes the dark chocolate just paint and bright up gold. It's glimmering gold! <laughs> I think that one's done. Nope. Nope. A little bit more shimmering and shimmering and shimmering. Although it's not alcohol mixed shimmer at this time, so it's a little lighter as it gets dusted and buffed it on there. Um, oh, a little bit for the anatomy of the butterfly. And I believe that one's going in the refrigerator now. Because that's the safest place to keep chocolate crafts before they are put where they are to be eaten. Oh, oh, peely, peely. Oh. Mmm, this one's definitely going to be a buff to stir from all the texture on there. And we buff, 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 buff. Ooh, I'm buffing in lines, I'm buffing in lines, I'm buffing in lines. See how the textures are just like making it like really pop? Oh, dust in the underside, dust in the underside, getting a natural scale from the paper. You do kind of have to work kind of quick when you're working with chocolate because otherwise it will melt. Um, even if it is compound chocolate, it can only do so much. Um, we went from copper, so now we're going to the red color. So this one's copper and rose red shimmer on a dark chocolate butterfly. Butterfly. Just dusting it on there like a mad woman in the sped Oh, footage! Oh yeah! But look at it, it's so pretty! Perfect for on a cake. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a simple little delicate dark chocolate butterfly. Just gonna give it a quick little dusting on the outside to embrace the scales. Well, embrace the scales. Oh, quick dusting. Even though this one's extremely simple with its design, due to it being three-dimensional, it makes it really cool and very simple to decorate. I mean, I only used one color, and yet that butterfly is so cute. So shiny. Here is the one where I get carried away and don't keep it simple. Instead, I'm choosing, you know what, Pyra? You know what, Pyra? You know what you want to do, you know? You want to do something really, really complicated. You want to make this butterfly of all the butterflies. You want to make this one a fire butterfly. You got to have yourself represented in your art, don't you? So, I'm going to painstakingly spend... <clears throat> Two and a half hours on this one tiny butterfly uh, <laughs> of me using the shimmer dusts and the alcohol to make me a butterfly for my mom's cake that represents me by giving it shimmery flames on the wings. Um, 
it does take a while for the flames to finally take shape, um, as you will see, but I spent so much time on this little butterfly and yes, it looks really cool in the end, but uh, I think it might be a good idea for us to maybe uh, fast forward a little bit between the different colors. I mean, on this particular butterfly, I used all three colors of shimmer, um, rose red, the copper, the gold, to bring out my flames on these wings. And I mean, I sped this up so freaking much. You have no idea how sped up this section is. Um, but it really did end up looking great. And if you can fixate on something creative like that, like I do, it's the only thing I can actually fixate on, sadly. I can't be constructive with my fixations and I can't choose when it will happen like this. It just happens unavoidable but sometimes it can have a really cool result this is one of those times other times I am <sighs> unsuccessful but the butterfly does fly well it is pretty and uh, a lot of time goes into setting the detail here so uh, let's speed it up a bit yeah okay We'll speed it up a bit, um, and, and uh, yeah, uh, otherwise a good portion of this video is going to be just this section of me getting hyper fixated and putting fire on a butterfly. Which, although cool for me, will probably be kind of boring for you. I don't know. I mean, I don't do things the normal way, but, uh... When I get fixated, I, I tend to get a little carried away, which I did here, and, um, yeah. I think some extra time on fast forward is a good idea, and we will see the results, yeah. But copper really bringing out that flame? It's so pretty. And so tasty. Oh look, I'm layering them up now. Layering up, layering up, layering up. Paint it now, paint it all the time. Paint it here, paint it good, paint it, paint it, paint it. Paint it, paint it, paint it. Paint it, paint it, paint it. How are you doing? I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, I encourage you to please, um, like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me in the algorithm and it lets me know that you want to see more stuff like this. Okay, now back to speeding up. Oh look, now it's time for a bit of time on the antenna. That way the fire butterfly can smell the blood it wants to feast upon. Yeah! See, look, how pretty is that? Let's go! Oh, gotta do the underside. Whoops. We nearly forgot the underside. But a quick dusting with the fanned out brush and that little butterfly is ready to go in the refrigerator. Now on to this little guy. Such a delicate little dark chocolate butterfly. See how delicately thin the wings are on these things? I mean, they don't feel delicate when you're smushing them together. But when you peel them apart, you really do notice 
how delicate these things are. See, here I am doing uh, the fan brush to bring out the texture of the paper. Dust, 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 dust. Hey! Now what am I going to do with the top leaves? Oh, oh, I'm making a bit of a lust dust mess there. Mmm, a little bit of alcohol. Yep, mm-hmm. Oh, and we're going in with some copper and we're going to do scales. Well, I never thought we'd be doing scales on a dark chocolate butterfly. Just kidding. Um, scales are what makes sense. The dark chocolate really does reflect the, the, the copper out. I mean, look at that band of, tr of copper that is created with the paint of the alcohol combined with the luster dust. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, luster dust is a bit expensive in comparison to other decorating things. Usually only professionals tend to use this stuff, but fuck, it's fun to play with. <gasps> that was the first swear of the whole video. Can you believe that? With the amount of swearing I do, that was my first F-bomb? <gasps> I can't believe that. Huh. That was my first F-bomb. Hmm. Good on me. <laughs> But these pots will last me quite a while, even though they were around $13 each. That's Australian dollars, so for those of you in America, uh, England or any other countries, uh, it'd probably be different for you because our dollar is worth a lot less than yours. Um, but it really is just super eye-catching when you use a bit of alcohol and the lust dust on the chocolate thing is if someone can't drink alcohol like if they're underage or pregnant or what have you you don't have to worry you can have uh people that can't have alcohol like that eat the chocolate butterflies because there's so little alcohol on there it just it its only purpose is to evaporate and make sure that in contact with the chocolate and um make it so that the lust of dust sticks and so yeah you don't no matter how many butterflies you eat you won't get drunk um that's just how it works <laughs> um but it's so cool looking i love it so if you're in aa or someone's pregnant or a child they can still eat these and there's no problem because there's no alcohol content but water doesn't do the same so just keep that in mind. Yeah. Because if you're pregnant or unable to drink because you're a child or, or you had a drinking problem and you're giving up, then you shouldn't drink. Drink. But it's okay to do this stuff with alcohol because it's not going to get you drunk because the alcohol evaporates. It looks so cool in the way that it catches the light and everything. I mean, seriously, <laughs> I'm so glad with how these turned out. Um, but yeah, that's the last one, and uh, I hope you guys liked it, um, and enjoyed seeing me get carried away, making them a lot more extra than they needed to be. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make chocolate butterflies. I know it's completely random for me, I've never done a tutorial of any sort before, um, but hopefully this one has been kind of entertaining. I really am a crafty kind of individual. And if you do want to see more stuff like this from me, I really would appreciate it. Um, if you let me know, because it's just one of those things that just makes my brain go, <laughs> happy Pyra, you're happy. You do the creative thing, you create something, you share it. You eat it when it comes to chocolate things you eat it that that stage is one of the fun parts uh, next day not so much but in the end eating it making it presenting it it's really great i just love that feeling um but yeah uh up next 
following this, you're going to see some pictures of how they ended up and how they looked on top of the pavlova. I hope you guys enjoy them and that you guys that are still here enjoyed the video. Um, this really was something different for me and, uh, well, I'm not used to showing my hands. Um, but uh, if you guys enjoyed this unique video made specially to, for like YouTube and stuff instead of just streaming, if you enjoyed that, please comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more like this. I really would appreciate that feedback. If there's anything you think I could do better, let me know that too. Who knows? Maybe I can grow a little from it too. But yeah, um, I'm Pyra Z, your little fire flower. You guys are awesome. Never forget that. Um, ba ba bow. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like the pictures of the finished result. And in case you're wondering, Pavlova is meant to look cracked like that. That's kind of part of how Pavlova is. But it tasted good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm Iris. Leave a comment down below and I hope to see you when I stream next. You guys are awesome. Bye! <laughs> Bye.